Chris, let me ask you first, what do you think makes Richard Burton Diaries so fascinating? I think that Richard Burton, although he was a very talented stage actor and an accomplished film star, in many ways he was more interesting than that. You know, he was somebody who thought quite deeply about the world and its problems. He read enormously literature, history, biography. And so in his diaries, you've got these very candid and careful assessments of the people around him and the world and the times that he's living through. And, of course, he was married to Elizabeth Taylor, Mm. and I think that means that it's going to be of great interest to people who are her fans as well. Yeah, absolutely. I think for many people, when we think of Richard Burton, we think of Elizabeth Taylor going hand in hand. So how does um, or how did their relationship come across in the diaries? Well, we're lucky because the bulk of the diaries deal with the period from 1965 to 1972 when Richard and Elizabeth are married, uh, during their first marriage, and Richard writes very fondly and warmly about Elizabeth. I think she comes out of the diaries as a very loving and supportive person by and large. You know, they did have rows, they enjoyed rowing, and of course their relationship had its fair share of stresses and strains, but I I think the diaries give the lie to the idea that somehow this was a cynical ploy to marry each other to become even more famous. I think they had a very, very strong bond. Mm. I love the entry where Richard says that he bought Elizabeth a brand new plane, (laughs) $960,000. I said, that's my man. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I think Elizabeth loved having money spent on her. To be fair, some of that money was probably her own. I think (laughs) she allowed Richard to make some of the financial decisions. And so he would buy jewels and uh, they bought a yacht together, of course, an aeroplane. They drove around in Rolls Royce and Bentleys. She loved that. (laughs) (laughs) And with all this extravagance, he was also a very troubled man. Why was that? He was an incredibly complicated and troubled man. I don't think he was fully satisfied with his career as an actor. He often said that he would rather have been a writer, that he wanted to be a scholar of some kind, that his ideal would have been to uh, have a post at Oxford University or something of that nature. I think as well, You've got to look at his background. Uh, His mother died when he was two years old. His father was largely absent. He was raised by his elder sister. And it was not an easy life. Uh, And I think he always struggled with um, some of the consequences of that. Uh, And alcoholism was a a battle that he, he fought pretty much continuously as an adult. Mm. And didn't Richard also say that he was actually ashamed of being an actor? Yes, he did. Uh, He came from a family where the standard occupation for men was to go down the coal mines. Mm. His father was a miner. All of his older brothers had been miners at one point or another. And he operated with a kind of standard of masculinity that was hard-working, physical labour, hard-drinking. To be an actor, to be speaking somebody else's words clad in these costumes and with heavy makeup was something that he rather rebelled against, I feel. But also I think he found it somewhat intellectually unsatisfying that he wanted his own words to be what he was known for. Mm. And how did he become this huge star? I mean, you've mentioned about his background, very humble beginnings. His mum was a, was she a barmaid? Yes, yes, that's right, yes. The father was a minor and one of 13 children. So it's very challenging mm. times for him. Yes, uh, well, he he was raised in Port Talbot uh, by his sister, and he was bright, uh, and he identified academic uh, achievement as one of the ways in which he could escape the limitations of his background, and he was really taken up and championed by one of his teachers, a man called Philip Burton, because Richard was born with the surname Jenkins, but Philip Burton became his legal guardian, and Richard took Philip's surname, and then from there he began acting. And he got a short uh, scholarship at Oxford University. Uh, This was during the Second World War. Uh, He was talent spotted. And when the war ended and he was demobilised from the Royal Air Force, then he was given acting opportunities first on the stage and then very quickly in films. And he he started uh, in Hollywood in the early 1950s. But he was also making his name as a great uh, classical Shakespearean actor at the same time. Ah, you see, hence the poetic Shakespearean entries as well in the diaries. He absolutely adored Shakespeare, poetry, um, classical literature of all kinds and was enormously well read. 
and had an incredible capacity for memorising poetry or sonnets or, or Shakespearean dialogue, whatever it was. And he feeds that through into his writing pretty continuously. Now, the book itself is very comprehensive, and I just wonder, how long did it take you to complete the book, and what was the journey like? Well, the whole project from beginning to end took about four years. The bulk of the editing was done in a one-year period, uh, somewhere in the middle. Uh, It was an incredibly interesting project. Because of the the scale of the diaries, one had to be relatively systematic uh, about it in searching for all kinds of references to clarify what Richard was was writing about, and, it, and in a sense, perhaps not taking for granted that the the reader would necessarily know very much about the film world or the stage world or indeed the events that Richard was was living through and commenting upon. So it was uh, it was a labour of of love actually, because I came to really enjoy the work and to uh, admire Richard, notwithstanding his many faults, but uh, be kind of, uh, fascinated really by his character. So it's been it's been tremendously uh, great fun to do. Do you know if the book has been well received by Sally Burton, Richard's widow? I do, yes, and Sally's very, very pleased uh, with the book. Uh, it was at Sally's behest that the university took on the task of publishing the diaries in the first place. She gifted um, his papers to Swansea University back in 2006, that's where I work. And uh, so, yes, yeah, Sally's been absolutely thrilled uh, with the success of the book and the fact that it's, uh, it's selling well and has received great coverage around the world. Well, I've told you about my favourite entry in the book, which is the brand new plane. Have you got a couple of your favourite entries to read for us, please? This entry is from November 1968, and it perhaps summarises Richard's feelings for Elizabeth Taylor. I have been inordinately lucky all my life, but the greatest luck of all has been Elizabeth. She has turned me into a moral man, but not a prig. She is a wildly exciting lover mistress. She is shy and witty. She is nobody's fool. She is a brilliant actress. She is beautiful beyond the dreams of pornography. She can be arrogant and willful. She is clement and loving. She is an ache in the stomach when I am away from her, and she loves me. And uh, this is a, a, another one from 1969. It's, uh, I suppose, it speaks to the um, the the melancholy and the the tormented nature of Richard. I've been going through one of my periodic moods of depression for the last three days. Periods when the very thought of seeing anyone except Elizabeth gives me a real physical pain, and when I'm not drinking, it is at its worst. Actually, during the last 12 months or so, I have become increasingly antisocial and I'm only really at comparative ease when fairly drunk. Time was when my chiefest enjoyment, after lovemaking and a good poem, was standing at a bar with a convivial few and rambling around poetry and politics and ideas of all kinds and talking of every subject except the loathed one of acting. And now nothing except to be crouched over a book in our bedroom with the air conditioning turned on to drown the noises of the outside world. At about 12 noon, I did something beyond outrage. I bought Elizabeth the jet plane we flew in yesterday. It costs, brand new, $960,000. She was not displeased. I think we can operate it at a reasonably practicable rate, perhaps with luck, almost nothing. It also means that we never have to land at that horrible London airport ever again. (laughs) Love it. I absolutely love it. Okay. Thanks, Chris. Is that all right? Yes. Thank you. Thanks very much.